Here's a wearable gimbal, which can also turn into a handheld solution, with some remarks, of course. Easy to mount on a chest or a helmet. If you're a biker or practicing similar sports that require butter smooth footage, the WG2X by Feutech is a great solution. Hey, welcome to the Tech for All channel, it's Michael speaking and we're about to deep dive into the world of another interesting gimbal, this time purpose-based and for some specific use cases it's ideal for bikers, however does have certain drawbacks which we will note by the end of the video. In this review I'll show you the hardware and design, we're gonna talk about the operation and the software controls via the smartphone app and that all would be accompanied by a lot of examples and demos of its real-life performance. Let's start with the unboxing process. It has a major importance here because it shows how well the device is packed and also that the box is supposed to be used as a carrying case. Material is similar to the carrying cases of much more expensive gimbals at, of course, a much more reasonable scale for such a small device. Inside you have enough space for pretty much everything. Ok, almost everything. With its universal quarter-inch thread mounting hole, it's easily worn with chest harness, shoulder straps and helmet mounts. It can also be attached to a desktop tripod, a selfie stick and various handlebars. Unfortunately, if you need to store the gimbal, the accessories and the attached action cam at the same time, it won't quite work, I'm afraid. But possibly for the more precise handworkers, this could be a matter of improving the design according to your needs. The WG2X is something like a successor to the WG2 by Feutech, and a big difference is the angled arm, and looks like this decision is taken based on customers' feedback. This is a classic 3-axis stabilizer, and here we have the first quite remarkable feature, the panning and tilting motors are supporting unrestricted 360-degree range of motion, which beats most of the competition, not only on the wearable gimbal market, but also when we talk about gimbals in general. There's a limitation with the rolling axis, while structurally it supports 310 degrees, with a camera it is often limited to around 70 degrees. As for build quality, the WG2X has aluminum and ABS construction, which makes it 27 grams, which is almost one ounce, lighter than the predecessor. Having added thermoplastic polymer doesn't make the construction worse, actually the gimbal looks quite durable and very well built. Mounting of an action camera is particularly easy, the mechanism allows tightening the camera and prevents it from falling down. This is a very reliable mechanism and is well aligned for the more dynamic nature of this gimbal. Almost all kinds of action cams with this scale are supported and there's only one arm that has to be balanced prior to the initial use. Failing to properly balance the gimbal may lead to vibrations or malfunctions, so do not underestimate its importance. It's related to the distribution of the weight. There are action cameras which weigh around 60 grams and such that are around 100, so there's quite a difference in terms of operation. Let's learn more about how it works. Three main modes. Here's the pan follow mode. The horizontal and vertical levels are locked and the only axis followed is the panning, which will result into left and right movements. The second kind of mode is the so-called following mode. It follows both panning and tilting. Note that rolling remains locked, although for most of the gimbal the follow mode makes the three axes participate, and the third mode, all locked, maintains the selected direction. We can see a few buttons integrated, and they all bring some nice features. The previously mentioned modes are changed by pressing the so-called mode button. There also is a dedicated shutter button, which works well with supported action cameras, and with this gimbal the main focus is on the GoPro line. I've tested with the Hero 6 and Hero 7 Black, and they both worked well, and Feutech promised this to work fine with the Hero Session, as well as the fifth generation of the Hero series. It didn't quite work with the new DJI Osmo Action, neither with the SJ Cam SJ8 series. Of course, most of the higher-end action cameras nowadays have a voice control feature, which works well most of the time, and that's something you can count on instead. The gimbal can easily turn into a handheld stabilizer, with the huge disadvantage that it lacks a control wheel or joystick. But the Feu Tech team has found a great solution to compensate for that as well. Manually set the desired position, 
keep the camera in position for two seconds and it's gonna maintain the setting. Very smart and very user-friendly. There's one more interesting button called the function button, which will require some learning. It is used for the so-called auto-rotation mode, which can make the footage more dynamic or simply help you to make awesome time-lapse shots. This is quite a great advantage, especially knowing that you can do that independent from the smartphone app. And currently there are very few gimbals which are supporting such a feature in that way. The app on the other side is the well-known Feiyu On. And while I like so much Feiyu tech gimbals, there's one thing I still can't enjoy to the maximum. That's the smartphone app. Not that it doesn't work, quite the opposite, but its design looks outdated and they may apply some improvements to the user interface and also address numerous complaints about not working features or issues with the firmware updates. But despite these shortcomings, it's okay. Perhaps the main reason I like the gimbal so much is that it has most of the features controllable without the app. From the software you can do some more fine-tuning and modern configuration, which is always a good thing in order to get the maximum out of any kind of device. A few practical advices. Tighten all the screws very well, especially when it is mounted on a helmet, and avoid flat mounts like mine. Better use something that has a better grip, like the provided in the pack which will keep the gimbal in position. Make sure it is well balanced, and if your action camera supports electronic image stabilization, it's a good idea to use as well. Having both EIS and hardware-based stabilization is often the best case. Alternatively, if you rely entirely on hardware stabilization, you can compensate the shaky leftovers with some software tricks. For GoPro users, there's an awesome software called Real Steady Go, which can automatically stabilize footage from GoPro cameras. It uses the information from GoPro's gyro sensor to provide much better results than a simple image analysis. Keep in mind that without software additions, there always will be minor shakes visible, because this gimbal is often attached to areas of the body where traditionally the footage looks shaky. But you can see that when placed side by side with barebone action cam, with not too capable electronic image stabilization, things look drastically better with a gimbal. Apart from my very positive impressions, here are some disadvantages to mention. Charging port is still micro USB in the ear where Type-C sees such a serious growth. And since GoPro is a target, it makes sense to use the same connectors as the Hero series. Battery life is also limited, around two and a half hours in the best case. This is not too bad, because the maximum shooting time with single battery cycle on the Hero 7 Black is around an hour and a half, but still could have been slightly better. Oh, and it is just splash proof, so likely a bad idea to be used with a heavy rain. But if we scale all that with great responsiveness, a lot of very useful and easy to access features and some ignorable disadvantages, with exception of not truly being waterproof, this is one of the most affordable and most advanced wearable gimbals, which can be used for almost any kind of videography, and the simplicity is well matching the targeted audience of sports addicts that usually don't have the patience to learn too much about the tech, unlike us, the gadget fans. At the end, there's one very important question to ask, which was like the elephant in the room during the whole review, looking into how well the mighty Osmo Action handles this kind of footage. Does the usage of filters or squeezing a bit more stability justifies the hassle of mounting an extra device? Let's see what you think and let's get in touch in the comment section below the video. Thank you so much for watching this review and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. Cheers!